Hi, and welcome to the fifth section of the Framer Playground course. Today I want to show you how to create code components with property controls. As you can see here, we created in the last session uh, this code component, but it does not have any overrides in the inspector. So those overrides can be done using property controls. And that can be extremely powerful because you can essentially customize any part of this code component versus a design component is limited to what Framer provides. By default, all of these code components comes with a preset size. So we're going to start by learning how to change the default props so that I can customize a preset size for this code component. Let's go to the code editor. I'm going to go to the input file and then I'm going to add after. So at the end, I'm going to set input. So that's the name of my component right here. Dot default props is equal to curly braces. And this is where I can put the default size. So let's set it to width 180, comma, height 56. If you save this, the next time that you're going to drag the input component, you're going to have a very custom size for that code component versus this one which is a fixed size. Now let's go ahead and add the property controls. The first thing we need to do is to import two new controls from the Framer library. So the first one is add property controls, comma, and then control type to set what kind of controls that you want. So for example, you have the text, you have the slider, you have images, etc. Now let's add the property controls to our components. So we're going to write add property controls, parentheses, input, comma, curly braces, enter. From here, we want to change, let's say, the placeholder text that says password, and we want to make it customizable. So we're going to start typing the name of the prop, so placeholder, and then the type. Inside curly braces, type and then we're going to use control type dot string because a string is basically a text then we need to set the title of the override so that in the inspector we can see that title when people change that override and it's going to be placeholder so this is still going to give us an error until we actually apply the props. React components can receive props, making the component dynamic. So you can change any part of this component by injecting new properties and so applying that into the content. So let's apply that inside the parentheses, props. And now you can see that this is for the placeholder and the user is going to be able to change that placeholder content. So we can simply decide to apply the props to right here. So where it says password, I'm going to delete this, curly braces, props.placeholder. Now if you save this, it's going to format your code a little bit and we can give it a test. You can see that there's no default, but when you click on the code component, now I can change to email and then it applies boom right here and each of these instances of the code component can have its own placeholder so this one can be password if I want to have a default prop then I can go and change my default props so now I can set let's say placeholder and set the default to email so the next time that I go to use my code component it's going to have email but sometimes it takes a few seconds to load so now it works and i can change this to something else again cool congratulations you just learned how to create your first customizable code component and it's only gonna get better from here now let's do the same for the icon. What if we want to be able to change the color of the icon by using overrides? You know how in the design, 
you can essentially change the color of the fill, right? Wouldn't it be nice to do that in a code component for this so that I can change the color and it's going to change the color of the icon as well. So let's do that. Now the icon itself doesn't need to have property controls. The way we can do it is by having the property controls directly from the input and then we're going to pass the props into the icon component and then the icon component is going to receive the props directly from the parent code component. So let's go ahead and go to input and then add a new one right here. Let's name it color and then curly braces. The type is going to be control type and it's going to be color. Color allows us to use this beautiful UI where we have a color picker and that's really nice. And then we're gonna use the title to icon color. So with this new prop, we can apply that to our icon component. So let's apply that. So color is equal to curly braces props dot color. Now that we're sending props to the icon component, we can just go to the icon component and receive those props. So props and then apply, instead of using the colors primary, we're simply gonna use the props dot color. And that's it. So now I'm going to go back and deal with this little error. And usually it's because we haven't set a default prop. So we're going to set the default prop to white. So if the user has not entered a color, it's just going to default to white. We're going to give it a test. First of all, it doesn't give us an error anymore. So we're going to go right here. You can see our code component is customizable as well with the color. And then we can even pick the shared color and each of these instances can have their own colors and that's very powerful now let's learn how to have a custom icon as well because right now you know if you have always the email icon it's not very useful because it's always going to be about an email input so what you can do is to create a list of icons that is changeable using a drop down menu and that's a really nice kind of override. So let's go back to the code and we're gonna go to the icon file. Right now we only have one icon, but we'd like to have more icons. So what you can do is to create a very simple if statement where it says, okay, if props.icon is equal to email, it's going to return this SVG. If it's password, it's gonna return another one. So let's do that. So right after this, before the return, I'm gonna do if parentheses props.icon triple equal sign double quotes password then curly braces we're going to return parentheses and then we need our SVG code for the password icon. So I'm gonna go back to feather icon and then type password click on the lock icon and then here I can just drag and drop to Visual Studio Code to get the code and then paste it right here. Now if you save it, it's going to format. Again, we can delete this class line of code right here. So what this means is that if the icon props is password, then we're going to return this SVG icon. And then we can add another if statement for the email icon. So let's do that. If parentheses props.icon triple equal sign email curly braces. And we're just going to need to put this code inside the curly braces. So I'm going to cut command X and paste it right here. Now, it does not have proper indentation, so that's why when you're gonna save, it's gonna do it for you. Since we have these conditions in place, and if props is nothing, it's just gonna return no icon. So what we can do is to set a default props for 
our icon component. So I'm gonna write icon.default props is equal to curly braces. And I'm going to set the icon prop to let's say password. Great, so now we can just customize our input so that we pass the icon as well. But first, let's set up a new property control that is a drop-down menu. So icon, curly braces, the type is going to be control type dot enum. This is going to allow us to have a drop-down. But for that to happen, we actually need a bunch of new values. First thing is we need a list of options for our drop-down. So options, and then we have to put inside an array. So square brackets, and then the first one is going to be email, comma. The second one is going to be password. Then for each of those options, we're gonna need a title. So option titles camel case. Again, using square brackets to have a list and email with a capital E, password, capital P. Since this is getting a bit long, let's save this and it's going to auto format your code for you. And right after option titles, we're gonna set also a title and put it as icon. Awesome, so now we have an icon property control. We just need to apply that to our icon component. So icon is equal to props.icon. Then we can set the default prop as well for the icon and it's going to be password. Now we just forgot one thing and that is to customize the icon color for the password. So right now for the stroke right here, for this one, the email one, it's fine. But for the password, we're gonna need to change the stroke current color to curly braces props.color. With this done, we're ready to test. So let's see, I'm gonna go right here, click on my code component, and now we have a beautiful drop-down menu. So we can see if I switch to email, boom, the icon changes. And you can imagine how powerful this can be to be able to create a list of icons that are custom to your company, to your team, and to your design system. One last thing that I wanna point out is that yes, we did use uh, this code component that includes the icon component, but the icon component on its own without default props, for example, because we're using props and there's no default color prop, it's not gonna appear because you can see here in the code, if, there's, if this equals nothing, then it, the icon is not there by default. So what we're gonna do here is just to have a color that is default and we're gonna set it to white. And this should solve our problem. Make sure to save this and I'm gonna go back. It's gonna take a little bit of time and there you go. You can even customize the default prop for the width and height. So that could be good as well. So 24 width and 24 height. When you're updating code components, it's important to, you know, be patient, save it, and then when you go back, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to load, but after that, it should be fine. And here, in the code components, when I drag it in the future, using the default props uh, of width and height, now I have the perfect size that I wanted instead of this giant square. And this one as well, I can get rid of this and use these ones for the future. So I'm gonna put it right here as a reference. But what I would love to do is to give you a homework. So here we managed to have a drop down from the input, but I would love for you to also create a drop down from the icon component so that I can simply use this collection of icons in my designs. I think that would be awesome. And when you do that, and you have your own custom icons for your team, make sure to tweet at me and show me what you have created using my course. 
I would be so happy to see that. So that concludes our fifth section. In the next one, we're gonna put all of this stuff into practice, into our prototype. So we're gonna have these forms that are going to be interactive. When I tap on it, I can start typing, but also this keyboard is gonna animate up, just replicating what you would see in a normal app on a device. So let's learn how to do that in the next session. Thank you.